what it looks like. I happen to have one right here. That's what it looks like. Very thin. It's just like this. So, just give you a little overview. It's very thin. And you can uh, change the background screen, the home screen, to personalize it any way you want. People put their own photos on it, I'm sure, but we ship a few, and you can make it anything you want. And what this device does is extraordinary. You can browse the web with it. It is the best browsing experience you've ever had. It's phenomenal to see a whole web page right in front of you and you can manipulate with your fingers. It's unbelievably great. Way better than a laptop. Way better than a smartphone. And you can turn iPad any way you want. Up, down, sideways. It automatically adjusts however you want to use it. And again, to see the whole web page is phenomenal. Right there, holding the internet in your hands. It's an incredible experience. Phenomenal for mail. You want to focus in on a message, you can do that. See your inbox. Again, just turn iPad sideways. Get a different view on your mail. Push the Compose window. A keyboard pops up that's almost life-size. It's a dream to type on. For photos, your albums are shown as stacks of photos. Your albums are events. You can unfold them, look at all your photos, flick through them. Got some great slideshows built in. It's a wonderful way to share your photos with friends and family. Built in a calendar. You can see your month's activities or your day's activities and everything in between. Built in a great address book for your contacts. Have a great maps application, which works with Google's back end. Show you maps, satellite views, zoom in on things. iPad is an awesome way to enjoy your music collection. And of course, we have the iTunes Store. Built right into the iPad, so you can discover music, you can purchase it. Movies, TV shows, podcasts, iTunes University, everything built right into the iPad. YouTube. You can watch YouTube on it, including YouTube in high def now. They've got a lot of high def video. And of course, it's awesome to watch TV shows and movies on. So that gives you a little overview of what the iPad can do. But it's nothing like seeing it. So I'd love to show it to you now. Let's take a look at it. Again, using this thing is remarkable. It's, it's so much more intimate than a laptop, and it's so much more capable than a smartphone with this gorgeous large display. So let's get back to iPhone. In 2007, iPhone reinvented what we think of as a phone. It's hard to remember what it was like before iPhone. <laughs> Carriers controlled what was on the phone. There were a few apps, but nothing like we think about apps today. There was no free market for apps. There was no app store. It was really different before the iPhone. And the iPhone started to change all of that in 2007. It was a revolution. In 2008, we added 3G networking and the App Store. In 2009, the iPhone 3GS was twice as fast, and we added some other cool features like video recording. For 2010, we're going to take the biggest leap since the original iPhone. And so today, today, we're introducing iPhone 4, the fourth generation iPhone. Now, this is really hot. And there are, there are 
well over 100 new features, and we don't have time to cover all of them today. So I get to cover eight of them with you. Eight new features of the iPhone 4. The first one, an all new design. Now, stop me if you've already seen this. <laughs> Believe me, you ain't seen it. <laughs> you've got to see this thing in person. It is one of the most beautiful designs you've ever seen. This is, beyond a doubt, the most precise thing, one of the most beautiful things we've ever made. Glass on the front and the rear, and stainless steel running around, and the precision of which this is made is is beyond any consumer product we've ever seen. Its closest kin is like a beautiful old Leica camera. It's unheard of in consumer products today. Just gorgeous. And it's really thin. This is the new iPhone 4. Now, It is just 9.3 millimeters thick. That is 24% thinner than the iPhone GS. Again, a quarter thinner in something you didn't think could get any thinner. As a matter of fact, it is the thinnest smartphone on the planet. So let me point out, let me point out a few of the things, uh, a few of the external things on it. Here are the volume controls, volume up, volume down, and mute. On the front, we have a front-facing camera. We have the receiver. We have the home button. We have the micro SIM tray. We have a camera and an LED flash on the back. If we look at the bottom, we've got the microphone, the 30-pin connector, and the speaker. And if we look on the top, We've got the headset jack. We've got a second mic for noise cancellation and the sweet sleep wake button. Now, because there have been a few photos of this around, people have asked, what's this? <laughs> Some have even said, this doesn't seem like Apple. What are these lines? in this beautiful stainless steel band. Well, it turns out there's not just one of them. There's three of them. And they are part of the entire structure of this phone. That stainless steel band that runs around is the primary structural element of the phone. And there are these three slits in it. It turns out this is part of some brilliant engineering which actually uses the stainless steel band as part of the antenna system. And so one piece is Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and GPS, and the other is UMTS and GSM. So it's got these integrated antennas right in the structure of the phone. It's never been done before. And it's really cool engineering. So. We have an all-new design. It's the thinnest smartphone ever. It uses stainless steel for strength. It uses glass on the front and the back for optical quality and scratch resistance. It's got integrated antennas and extraordinary build quality. Again, I don't think there's another consumer product like this. When you hold this in your hands, it's unbelievable. So this is our all new design for the iPhone 4. That's the first one. Second one, this is a biggie. Something we call the retina display. What's that? Well. In any display, there are pixels. Here's four of them. 
We start off with the retina display by dramatically increasing the pixel density. Four times as many pixels in the same amount of space. Now, why is that important? Well, let's make more pixels. And let's say we want to draw the letter A. And this is the outside boundary of one of the strokes of a letter, the letter A. Well, as you can see, we turn on pixels inside that stroke. We can get far more precision the more pixels we have. And we play all sorts of tricks by putting different levels of gray pixels on that line as well to try to fuzz it for our eye. But when we zoom out of this, what you can see is that because we have four times as many pixels, we get really, really sharp text compared to what we normally get on displays of lesser resolution. Now, the retina display has 326 pixels per inch. This is. There's never been a display like this on a phone. People haven't even dreamed about a display like this on a phone. But it's more than that. It turns out that there's a magic number right around 300 pixels per inch that when you hold something around 10 or 12 inches away from your eyes is the limit of the human retina to differentiate the pixels. And so they're so close together when you get at this 300 pixels per inch threshold that all of a sudden things start to look like continuous, continuous curves. Like text looks like you've seen it in a fine printed book, unlike you've ever seen on an electronic display before. And at 326 pixels per inch, we are comfortably over that limit. And it's extraordinary. So let me give you an example of a normal display on the left and the retina display on the right. Look at the difference. Can you see it? Here's some more text of different sizes and different weights. And you can really, really see this stuff. Once you use a retina display, you can't go back. <laughs> when you get to character-based languages, kanji in this case, it's also striking. And it's not just text. It's images and video as well. Look at the difference. This is the same image on a normal display and a retina display. Here's another one. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So what I'd like to do now is show this to you live.